I'll once again introduce Prasad Bhattarajan. He is the one who's going to conduct the workshop. And like I said earlier, he's one of India's leading wildlife artists. And for those of you who weren't there for the pre-lunch sessions, this uh, artist here, like when he was trying to stand up using the support of walls, that's when he would uh, look at the cracks in the walls and he would say, this is a cow, this, this is a dog, this is a sheep. And those were the first steps he took towards not just standing up, but also becoming a great artist. So he is featured in several of India's leading wildlife magazines. He travels a lot and studies his subjects very well. He owns Mango Group Art Gallery. And he is spearheading this movement uh, to unite artists for the sake of conservation. And that is called Artists for Wildlife and Nature. Or in short, it's called AWN. So today he will introduce you to bird anatomy and how to sketch birds using geometric and negative shapes. So over to the side. Good afternoon, everyone. So this is the program for, uh, I think, another two hours, right? Two hours. Yes, two hours. So we will be first covering single line drawing, like uh, any any drawing, let's say base or birds, mammals, anything, starts with a single line. So uh, based on that, we will be drawing using single line how to start bird drawing. That's what we will be covering first. Second is shapes and negative drawing. So every subject in nature is made of certain geometrical shapes. So that is very essential in any drawing. So if you don't get the shapes correctly, the drawing is not going to be correct. So that's what we'll be covering next. Then, since it's about bird art, we'll be covering the head drawing. Like we will draw the head of the bird. How to get the head position different. There are different head positions. So we'll be drawing that. And then the body. Later, that is the next slide. So later we have a section of books which uh, you can actually refer. So I refer all these books. And that's how I learned uh, drawing on my own. So you can write down these, uh, this will be in the end, you can write down all these books and uh, you can refer to them as well. So then, in the end, we have three quizzes, like based on uh, words. So whoever answers those quizzes, like they'll get a print of my drawing quiz. Three, three people from this audience. So don't sleep. Yes. So the idea is to keep you awake. So whoever is awake can answer those questions. So introduction. We will start. Uh, like someone from the crowd can tell me what is the difference between mammal and the bird. Why it's called a bird? What are the key key different Come on. Yes. Uh, so mammal eats bird egg once, whereas birds lay eggs. Yes. Yes. That is one key factor. Another one. The beaks. Beaks. And beaks. Yes. So. Uh, we will start with single line drawings now. Yes? No? So this, let's make this interactive session not like only I am going to speak. So I need some response as well. Yes? No? Yes. Right. So when everyone is ready, just let me know. Yeah. You can follow me when I'm going. So we are ready? All set? Yes. Yes? Yes? yes. yes. All right. So whenever we start a drawing, like I said, this will be single line. We'll start from a single line. That shows the angle of the bird. Like there are different angles in every drawing line. So this is a horizontal angle. The most common angle you will spot a bird. So let's start with that. So done? Everybody? Then we start. 
That we will come to later. Okay. <laughs> First, let's do the basics. So the idea of doing this, this drawing is to get the angles. So there are various angles in every bird. So first, when you are sketching light, like if you see a bird, how fast it moves. So if you don't get the light, like for humans, you always mark the shoulder. For birds, you always mark the, the angle. So if you don't get the angle right, you will not get the proportion nothing you will not get the bird at all right This is a straight angle, like you would have seen uh, cystic olas and all sitting like this. They will like, keep their uh, legs wide and on the lead they will be sitting. You would have seen them sit like this. This is a straight angle. Photography wise, straight angle, not very good angle. <laughs> because you can't see any features and you know, it's very difficult to identify the bird also. But for drawing, we can definitely do it. So next we have the side head profile. So head profile is like very curved, curved line, the head profile of birds. So based on this line only we will be drawing.
the side profile. You see a lot of cormorants and all, they keep sitting in this position in the, in the side profile and they are not opening their eyes. So based on these three positions, you can actually simplify and draw any kind of bird that is actually sitting using just one line. If you get these lines right, the position right, you can sketch live as. So any questions on the single line bird still? No, I think uh, what he was asking was, yes. is there a proportion of the position? Yes, there is. There is, there is like head. Right now. Yes. So the head proportion, you cannot draw a head very big. The first idea is to get the head right. So once you get the head right, then you get the body, like based on the type of bird you are going to do. So don't draw a very big head for a rambler. Should the body it's, a, it's three times. Basically for smaller birds, it's three times. You can draw the head size. So like raptors, it will be more. Like humans, we cannot fix the head for bird because every bird is different and wingspan, tail, everything is different. So warblers I know because I draw a lot of warblers, I know three times the head size, the body is a bit roundish and smaller bird. So any other questions? So lines we need to practice daily. For artists that is the key. If your lines are not good then your sketches will not be very good. Horizontal and vertical. Every day only to practice. The flying birds, the lines of flying birds. For example, an eagle or something like that when it's flying, how do you find the line? Flying, this is the vertical line, right? Flying bird. Flying bird will be something like this because the body is boat shaped. Then you can draw the edge. Either the bill is pointing upwards or downwards. You can Basically it is using the wind and then smaller birds usually use the wind and glide. They don't actually fly. They glide. So this is going upwards. The bird is flying upwards. So if it's scooping down, let's say like osprey and other birds that go down, then the line will be For kingfishers also, they like. Yeah. And all these, you should have noticed the head is always connected to the body. Doesn't have like for bitterns also it's connected, but it's elongated the head a little bit. 
unless forbidden, I think most of the legs are connected to the body. Any questions? So here, when we draw a head, I will tell you. This is just for this one. Since you are. So when we draw a head, this is the point. This is the eye, and the beak should always, the upper mandal should always be at that level. It cannot, it cannot be lower or upper and like our ears, if you see, they are always at the upper lip when we draw portrait. So similarly, the eyes. So it cannot be below. Below the bill, it cannot be. Then the anatomy is not right. So this is about single line drawing. Like you can practice more and more on this on daily basis, and then you can see the different position that the bird sits, and you can. Based on that, we can do a rough sketch now. Very fast sketch. So here again, like the body and head should be proportionate. So here it's not bigger. The head I've not drawn it very big. And this is the single line. We started with single line, basic shape, and only lines. We have used only lines. Yeah. Very rough sketch. Every drawing should start with a single line. If you want to mark the positions, like let's say for humans, like I was saying, we mark the shoulder. So like birds, always better to mark the angle, which angle, like whether it's facing or straight, or whether it's horizontal or vertical or going downward. So that will show the position of the bird. Otherwise, it's very confusing. If you don't know the position of the bird, so that is the first thing when you see any photograph or any image, you need to know which position that bird is. So that gives you clear picture. You can start, that is the right note to start. Otherwise, we start with confusion. So this is the first thing we need to identify in any photograph that we are going to draw. Or if we are drawing from the field. So what we call the horizontal is slightly curved? Yes, on, because the, if you see the uh, spine of any thing, it's curved only. It's not uh, straight. Yes, yes. So here also if you see when I started, I started with the curvy line only. So the weight is at the bottom. So the spine is going up. So next we have I think in birds we have variety of birds, right? Ground birds. Then, so I don't want to take scientific names and everything. 
So what I have simplified the, those words into like seven different categories. So these are line drawings. So what we did using single line. Now we have like line draw, using line drawings. We make the skeleton of the bird first. That's how you start the bird. So long birds we have who don't fly like long distance and all that. Then we have the ducks. That is the waders. Then you have the herons. Then we have the parrots and raptors. Then we have the finches. So this is the basic. See, not able to see that one. Yeah. Like if you are not able to see the video or what I'm drawing, like the script that you can make. This is the card. In this way? Okay. This? Can start. Visible, right? Yes. So using basic shapes again, like we'll draw the ground birds first. Alright. These are very simple shapes. Like if you see, just capturing the gesture of the ground bird. Ground birds usually pick from the soil. So pecking, then when it's alert, it lifts the head up. So all those gestures we are running. When it's running, it's always in the crouching position. It runs. So the fast runners. And then their feet are always like on the ground. Like it's not. And much bigger they have. The feet are much bigger compared to the other 
smaller boat. So basically, they are using more of their feet only for running. Very rugged feet they have. So this is a basic shape. So the same bird, if you want to make it into 3D, like they work in 3D software and all that, right? Like in animation and all that. Every subject is made of like three dimension. One is what are the three dimensions? X, Y, Z. Yes, X, Y, Z. So length, width, and then you have the depth. Basically, it's the cave kind of thing. You are building a mess. Like if you, someone would have studied 3D maps and all that, you would have known. It's a mess that you create, make a rounded shape. So based on this mess and light, when you add light and shadow, then you get the depth. These are ground works. So like that, we have seven categories. Like. This I can share it with Suhas. Like, Ullas I can share with him. And you can share it with whoever has participated here. You can use this as reference whenever you are drawing. So using same simple lines, we can get into complicated like feathers, everything we can build upon the same thing. Next, we have the roosters, pea fowl and everything. Next, after the ground bird, that is the next category we have. They have a long, long tails they have.
the people actually the skeletal system looks just like that. Nothing. When you don't add feathers, muscles, and all that, based on this only you build the next next layer. So what I have seen, we started with straight lines for the position like horizontal lines and everything. Now we are using lot of curves. That is because long necks. Long necks means there are lot of curves. See lot of herons in the neck, they will be in this position. They have a long neck, so which is divided into three actually. If you see the joint, the three divisions, the neck goes. So it goes horizontal in the same way as well. And there is a S curve when it goes horizontal. For raptors, you don't have elongated neck. Raptors, the necks are always they are stuck to the body. Their main function is their wings, beaks, and their talons.
that covers the line drawing. Any questions on the line drawing? How how we do it and how the neck is placed? <laughs> so what? That's what I will share this uh, sheet. Uh, I will share it with him. He can circulate with you guys. It's very simple. Like uh, even kids also whoever wants to draw birds, very easy way to start. No need to draw the feathers and all those things. They can start with these uh, stick drawings, and then later they can build up on that. In seven categories, like the sheet has all the seven uh, types of words. They are very, they are made very basic. Interesting. So they can start with this. Even over like the adult also, whoever is interested, they can start with it. We will cover the shapes. Practice that various shapes how to place the bill. Just draw two ovals and place the bill in the right position, upper, lower, or looking straight. up. Very simple, not very complicated. Every bird can look. So based on this, you can build up the neck, the neck, everything you can build up based on this. Can be okay. So if you are drawing just the heads, very simple two shapes, geometrical shapes, ovals you can use. And here marking the beak is very important. When we draw both the shapes, we need to see the angle and where to place the beak. So that is very important. Once you place the 
B, then you get the angle there. I mark two lines, based on that I build the head, started just with the line. So here the basic shape would be, once you mark the line, basic shape is only this one. Here I will be drawing three water birds, three or four water birds. Just the negative shape, the insides. Later I will draw the, I will sketch the outer and then the word bird will be visible. Like birds which are very bright in bright sunlight. You can sketch only the outer area. You will not shape the inner. So the bird will be visible later. So that is using negative shape. This is just inner area I will be shaped. Any kind of bird, like I said, this basic shape is very essential. If you don't get that right, then no point in colouring or painting. It's better to rework on the shape.
for these drawings, can you just initial uh, line in the For these yeah. drawings, is it? Yeah. So here, here change very simple. Like that. And here again, and again. Here again, it will be like this. Because the neck is more prominent. Sketching on the field to start silhouettes are best subject. When we are watching birds and a uh, lot of other subjects, mammals and silhouettes are best best to draw on for field sketches. They just give the outer shape of that particular subject. practice nothing is difficult and nothing is impossible the number of hours you put in and your interest next That's time when you see your interest to silhouettes so if you get silhouettes learn that graph you will definitely yeah. put in more hours sketching subjects when we sit nothing yeah. is difficult i can say that since 2005 i've been sketching i sketch every day like even now also i sketch there is not a single day i don't sketch yeah that i can Yes. yes. So you need to sketch. It's like if you don't do it, you die. That's it. So that is the kind of passion you need to have. Then it's not difficult. Every subject can be mastered. Can be any subject.
like now I'm I'm learning portraits. I'm going for classes now. Human I thought yes, yes, human portraits. So I thought it's very difficult, and I shied away from that subject for a very long time. But now I'm studying the basics. I'm sketching every day, so I'm learning. So it is about passion only. I I cannot say it's difficult. But with time, you definitely understand. Like it's not that difficult. But these are simple. <coughs> Two simple lines, everybody can draw. It's not difficult at all. Hope that answers your question. Or did I go? <laughs> so it's. Yes. Please have a good eraser. Good. Good eraser. Eraser. Many times, what happens is. Ah, yeah. So I have a small tip. So uh, when you start off, I would suggest you use uh, some so something called as a mechanical pencil. It's very light. Yeah. Yeah, it's got an eraser at the back. There. So very very light. And another tip is always use. Hatch grade pencil, like there are different grades of pencil, right? Hatch grades are very light, B grades are darker. So the higher grade you use in pencil, the softer it is. is you will get like very dark lines. So use a hatch grade pencil, like let's say four hatch, three hatch, or hatch or two hatch, something like that. That gives very light, but they are very hard. You cannot press. And there are various grips also when you sketch. So what I'm using right now is this grip. Ha! Ah, have you changed? Know the answer. They need to put the hand first. Then, and you should not give out the answer. Someone gives out the answer in the crowd, then whoever puts the hand first, they get the print. So it should be fair play. Don't give out the answers. Yeah, like done. This is done. Sir, it was all for Zoom model. No. Wait, wait, wait. No. No. No one in the count? Experts? Yeah. Actual guy? No. Yeah, some. Full, full. I need the full answer. No. No. Okay. Yeah. Change the color. Yes. Or breasted coffee. Yeah. So can we? Come on. You can come on stage. Come on the print. Please come. Yes. This one. a very simple question related to our state itself, which is our state word? <laughs> very easy question. Please. I don't want to...